there's no cars in here. But I do have my tugboat. Uh, with the broken, <laughs> the broken 3D printed ring. So I've got to, you know, get, get that sorted out. But the main event is I've got a pretty interesting piece of history here. Uh, this is a, a P60 uh, pumper. And this particular model would have been found on nearly every Navy ship, U.S. Navy, that is. Um, you know, from the late 30s to probably the late 60s. Now, this is a, a this, so it says here, the Pacific Pumper, Pacific Marine Supply Company. Okay, the pump is a, a model 2010. Um, it is a water-cooled unit, and this is type NY, so it's rated for seawater. So the rotors inside the pump are bronze. So the crankcase here is filled with 30 weight oil. It's a two-stroke gas. Here's the funky carburetor. There we go. It's got a little nice little wooden float there. So if you're at all familiar with the carbs, there you go, there's your float, and that's the ball. And no air cleaner on this unit, so this that's just how it is. This is how it looks. You have some throttle control here. Here's the meter valve. This is gonna control the air fuel mix. So you know you tighten it for less fuel, you loosen it for more fuel in your mix. The fuel tank for this uh, is now it says 1925 Johnson Bronze Pump Antique. Now that that cannot be right. However, it is somehow possible that the motor is older. Uh, this is probably not uh, a Navy unit. It, it's possible, but there's really no way to tell. Now, type NY pumps have this frame that goes around them. The base allows it to be stacked on top of other units. So down here, you've got enough of an indent to where they'll actually sit right on top of each other. So, you know, smaller ships could have had, say, six of them, or maybe four of them near the uh, damage control lockers. Another interesting tidbit here is it has a foam proportioner for the um, firefighting foam so in a jiffy you you've got your suction hose here and so it's reinforced hose it, you can add firefighting foam that goes to there as it does and then it gets put out now this is 60 gallons per minute 100 psi at full bore and what this is going to do is this is going to actually feed water into the block and that's going to route your exhaust down into the base and then out through that port. So what's that do for you? Well what it does is it allows you to run this inside a ship but it would be passing the exhaust gases through a stream of water that can simply be directed um, you know, out of the ship. No starter motor here. You know, you just got your little starter rope. You just stick it in the notch tight. You know, you bring it over and you, you give it a little, uh, you give it a little business. Uh, so probably tomorrow, something like that, I'm gonna go ahead and see if this thing wants to start up. If it wants to start up. Uh, this thing's very, very finicky. very very easy to flood out. Uh, if it does want to run what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and prime this line up. This should actually self-prime but I will I'll still prime the line up 
and uh, start it up. And, and we'll start start moving some water just to see if uh, uh, the main thing is to see if if it's willing to run at higher RPMs. I try keeping it down, but it's just I couldn't do it. Maybe it's possible to run it at a lower speed by you know stifling the uh, you know the intake, but. I just couldn't do it. I don't have the manuals for this, uh, for the engine. And so it's really just going by, you know, old internet forums of, you know, people with antique, uh, you know, antique equipment like this. So the fuel mix, I believe, is going to be 1 to 30 with SAE 30, uh, non-ethanol gas, high test. And um, I have had this running. I do have a video on my channel of this thing starting out for the first time and, you know, who knows. Uh, this was donated to the museum that I volunteer at, the USS Slater, um, by another museum, the Berkshire Railway Museum. And they had been stored for, you know, God knows how long. So the ultimate goal is to get this guy running and reliable, you know, learn enough about it, do any tune-ups. Um, obviously, I'm going to pretty it up. I'm going to replace the spark plugs. Um, everything's going to be painted as it would be on a Navy ship, which is uh, uh, red and silver. So everything about the engine would be silver, the base is silver, and then the pump would be red as well as the fuel tank. The fuel tank sits here up on top. That would also be red. Uh, hopefully be able to do some public demonstrations with it. And then obviously um, there are three others on the ship that are not in running condition. So I would like to go to those um, and not just do a cosmetic uh, restoration, you know, just chip all the you know, crud off of it, clean it up and paint it, but you know, get all of them running um, so that so that they last longer. Um, you know, things don't like sitting around uh, for you know decades and decades. And so fiddling around with things and then uh, you know at least just running fluids through them, you know, turning them over, it helps. So at the very least, if they don't run, they will be in better shape for the next person who comes along and, and tries to make them run. Um, I will make that video public uh, of of this guy running. Um, there's been plenty of trials and tribulations of getting, you know, getting this thing all cleaned up. I didn't document really much of it, but, um, you know, maybe next time I will, because this has been, this has been, you know, nothing, nothing super trying, but, um, it's been, it's, it's been noteworthy. I'll put it like that. All right, that's it for now. Um, you know, let me know if you want to see more of this, if anyone's, if anyone's still watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.